So today I'm going to show you how I built this amazing wood stairs as well as those handrails you're seeing and the concrete pad right here all by myself. So let me show you how I did it, okay? So let me tell you something. As an engineer, I just do not like stairs. I do not ever design them. That's actually the job of the architect. So I really don't want to hear anything about risers, thread, thread thickness, thread depths. I guess it's just too complicated and I usually don't want to think about it. But here I am. I have no other choice than facing my fear and building my own stairs so that I can get up to my cabin. And to make things worse, the terrain is actually pretty sloped. Like a lot. So anyway, look, I did a lot of mistakes trying to put these stairs together, so allow me not to waste your time and I'm going to lay out what I think is the best way to do it, um, you know, after figuring out what not to do. So the first step is you can go to this website and go actually check out a stair calculator which will greatly help you in this endeavor. The first thing you need to find out is what is the total rise, which is the total height from your finished height, which is the top of your deck, all the way to the bottom. But keep in mind that if you're gonna have a slab down there, you really need to subtract that number from your total rise. You will then need the target step height, the thread thickness, and the thread depths. The target step height is defined by code, and in uh, North Carolina, the maximum is eight and a quarter. The thread thickness is whatever I'm gonna put on my thread, which is gonna be deck ball, which is gonna be one inch. And then the thread depths, same, there's a value, a minimum by the code, but I'm gonna pick 10 inches. The calculator will then spit out the first information you will need, which is the total run, which in my case will be 60 inches, which pretty much tells me where exactly is the edge of my stringer compared to the face of my deck and the face of my stairs. So that's gonna be my reference point, <laughs> 60. All right, so I thought I could get away with a fall by fall pad, but it's obvious now that I'm gonna need a lot more than that because my post base are gonna be embedded in it and that's already 50 and three quarter. And you probably want like a good like six inches on each side. Oh man, it's gonna be gigantic. Yeah, 51 plus 12, what's that, 63? I'll write it down here, 63 by 48. So wherever I marked my 60 inches, I have to go back by 12 inches, one foot, because I need my pad to actually be present there so that my stringer will be able to actually sit on it. So you can see that I use some very scientific method using sticks and whatever I could find around to kind of delineate that pad. And then after that, I just quickly checked that it was in the square uh, because you know I was gonna have to start digging it because it's not flat. So here's the pad. So then it was time for some fun digging. So I started probably digging 12 to 14 inches on the, on the high end and then let it die flat into the ground and then built kind of a box out of two by six, which will be where my uh, pad will be. Okay, so here's my scientific method. Look, put your arms like that. That looks parallel. I said, that's good. That looks pretty good too. Uh, All right, so last check. I wanna make sure that this, this member is absolutely parallel to the cabin. So I was thinking, what if I take this piece of wood and, and then I can measure, you know, to the post here. This is what, 81 and a half. Oh, 81 and a half. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. So because my ball here is a two by six, so that's five and a half inch, I want to have a four inch slab. So I pretty much more or less put, uh, you know, one and a half inch of gravel at the, at the bottom here and, you know, made sure to really, really compact it good because really the slab will be uh, sitting on it. Yeah, it's pretty much level. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. So if you watch this whole cabin series, you remember that I ended up buying a lot more concrete than I needed the first time. And so this is actually leftover from like a year and a half ago. And obviously I tried to protect it. So I'm about to find out if there's any of that concrete that's gonna be usable. I need about 10 bags for this landing for the staircase. So let's see. <laughs> okay, cool. So that one is completely done. It's, uh, there's nothing I can do with it. Oh, I think they're all like that. I mean, yeah, look at this. I can't use that. So I'm hoping that some in the middle here are still good because I didn't buy any concrete. I was really hoping to reuse those. That's shot. That's shot. That one's shot too. I should have kept them in my garage, but I was too lazy to move them. 
it's trash. Even the ones that were okay on the top, they're completely solid from the bottom because obviously the moisture was coming from the bottom as well. So, I mean, there's pretty much none that I can really use. I guess I'm good to go buy concrete which I wasn't planning on, so cool. Cool surprise. So then here I was to Lowe's buying 12 bags of concrete. So 12 80 pound bag is about 960 pound. And I was a little bit worried because that's what my wheel used to look like. And after I loaded everything up, I mean, I was pretty much flooring my car, as you can see here. But technically, I was still within the payload of my vehicle, which is about 1,100 pounds. So I just went for it and it worked. I was able to make my way home safely and was able to get all my concrete bag ready for pouring that pad. So that's the reinforcing we're going to use. I'm done with it. I mean, it doesn't look too great and I'm trying to finish it, but I think I put way too much water in the concrete. And so it's already been an hour and it's still, yeah, it's still completely wet. So fortunately it's going to be nighttime in about 30 minutes. So I might have to come back with a lamp. All right. So 7.30, going to be nighttime in 10 minutes. This concrete has been poured uh, two hours ago. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try and finish it. Is that what they call it? Oh my goodness, this is terrible. I'm trying to pretend to know what I'm doing. I mean, I kind of like it. I don't know if it's going to look that good. That's not too bad. And then my idea was to use that broom method. <laughs> Am I going to mess this all up? But find out. Man, this is not bad at all. I guess you just put as little fences as possible. This is not bad. I mean, at least to me, because it kind of hides all the imperfection now. All right, so let's try to do the edge again now. Man, that looks so good. This side looks amazing because it's much drier. Pretty happy with the result. We'll see when it's dry. Oh no, I actually nailed it better. I wanted to sign this. And I'm even gonna put the dog name, Peppa. It's just a little memory so that when I come back in 25 years with my daughter, she can see that and it will be pretty amazing. All right, hopefully nothing falls on it and no stupid animal is gonna come and walk on this thing. That was a long day. I hope it looks good. Yeah, oh man, it needs to dry some more. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. I mean, again, I'm no expert and you know, it'll look okay for what it is. 
Okay, so based on the calculator for the stair stringers that I'm showing you, then you will use that information to draw it on your stair stringer, where you'll definitely need one of those carpenter square. And more importantly, you will need those little knobs that I've used in the past. You've probably seen them used when I cut the rafters and the bird's mouse and all that stuff. So in my case, the this is the thread, uh, which is 10 inches. So you want this place exactly on the outside of the 10 inch mark. And then here is my riser, which is eight and three sixteens. And so that's where I place this one. So that's the first one. This one is a little bit different. And you probably want to quickly double check that, you know, you really got here. I should have, you know, an exact 10 inches. Seems fine. And then here, uh, you know, eight and three sixteen. That looks good. And then you just keep going. And so the calculator says we have six riser. So one, two, three, four, five. And so that should be the last one. This is my last step. And then typically you go back this way. Keep in mind that the first step is actually one inch shorter and only seven and a quarter. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it here. So then you cut this, you know, all this is gone. And then at the top here, you actually will go back this way. You know, like you're lining up with this line. Boom, and you will just cut this, cut this, you know, we're cutting this. And then you really wanna just, you don't wanna overcut it, so. Bam, and then do all the rest. <laughs> Easy, right? All right, there we have it. First stringers I've ever caught in my life. So now the question is, is it gonna fit? Well, let's find out. I mean, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. I'm not gonna complain about this. All right, well, let's cut more stringers. And obviously the thing you want to keep in mind is that when you cut this line, you'll have to take the line out if you don't want the stringer to be just a little bit bigger. And so if you're wondering how many stringer you're going to need, it's fairly simple. It depends on the material you're going to put on your thread. Because I'm going to use one inch deck ball, I actually need a riser at 16 inches on center. So in my case, that would be four of them. So here is 39 and a half. So let's cut a piece of two by four. Okay, do that on all four. So you definitely want to treat your hand cuts here, especially that the bottom of those stringers will be in contact with concrete. And so you really don't want them to end up rotting. So I cut this to be the same width as between my post. And then here's where I'm going to put those inside ones. Then I also need to mark this up, the edge of the post completely straight down. Okay, so I don't know, I'm supposed to maneuver this thing. It's pretty heavy, obviously. Doesn't look too bad. Yeah, hey man, looks pretty good actually. Well, okay, so now the real test is all those steps and stuff all level with each other. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, I mean, it is pretty darn good. And other test is to know, you know, what does this look like? It's pretty good. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. Oh my goodness. This is so cool. Check this out, check this out. That's like the best feeling for a DIYer. When you see this little bubble right in between those lines, you know you're doing it right. Or at least you're getting the right result, which is, I guess, in my opinion, all that really matters. Huh. 
Hard at all. This is so nice. Okay. So just so you know, you will have to use Simpson Special one and a half inch nails to go into the stringer and also don't forget to put the nails at the bottom of the hanger. A good practice will be to uh, definitely treat all the cut ends of your stringers to make sure that they're fully protected against moisture and insects. So before attaching the bottom of the stairs, I really wanted to be sure that the stringers were indeed square with the face of the cabin. That's good! After that, I went back and actually drilled some hole in that 2x4 that I had installed at the base of the stringers. I went back after with a concrete drill bit to go a little bit deeper because I was about to install some tapcon screws to connect that 2x4 to the concrete and make sure that those stringers will not move and will not try to kick out out of the way. Something else you can do for extra protection is use that same tape that I've used on my uh, deck joist and install that on your stair stringer. I mean, obviously they're gonna see so much rain that it wouldn't be a bad idea to add additional protection. So obviously that's 39 and a half. I don't know how much overhang you add. Probably do, yeah. Probably gonna do a half inch overhang on each side. So 40 and a half. And then I just kept going and uh, cutting as many of those uh, deck balls as possible and starting placing them uh, where they were going to be uh, screwed. Looks great, huh? Well, that's it. That's all I have. I actually haven't bought enough material to finish the staircase. Well, we're just going to do it with what I have today and I'll go get some more sometime. So let's just attach all those planks now. Well, I'm still missing a level, but that's kind of nice. Oh yeah. Stairs to go to the cabin. Solid. Okay, so now you gotta build somehow some guardrail right here. And that's not gonna be easy. I hope I can figure this out because it sounds difficult. I bought this, which is a base, which is gonna go right here. So I'm gonna have to drill a pretty big hole right here in the middle. So half inch bit. Uh, this first, and then this big thing. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. So I think a good way to know what's going on is to use a two by four and put it on all the stairs. I'm trying to find out, you know, the height of the post down here. So you can see here, that's my reference. I'm going to use this as my reference. This here is only two inches to the bottom of the post. But if you look here off that base, look at that. I'm at above uh, almost 14 to go from the bottom of the post to the bottom of that two by four. So this post here is going to have to be much taller than the one over there to still kind of get me that same height. That's 13 and a half. So 13 and a half minus two is 11 and a half. So my post here has to be 11 and a half inches taller than those ones, which are 42. 42 plus 11 and a half, 53 and a half. And it's gonna have to be the height of my post here. Aha. Okay, this is good. So let's go ahead and put all the hardware. We also have this one here. Okay. Something like that is what we're trying to do. You remember here, I had like little knobs at the bottom of uh, the baluster. They make some that have a built-in angle to fit specifically for the stairs. But obviously your angle stairs could vary. And that's exactly what's happening. If I put a baluster and I put it exactly at that angle, I mean, <laughs> the baluster is, uh, well, how shall I say? Completely out of whack. So 
this is not gonna work. <laughs> All right, so I ran back to Lowe's and I got different attachment here for my balusters. And then let me show you this. So those are the one that I had purchased and you see it already has a pre-cut angle. And so that's not a good idea because your stairs, if you, especially if you build it yourself, is gonna have a different angle every time. So this will not work. So I just wasted money on those. I'm not gonna use them. If you go at Lowe's, they have those kinds here, which you can tell as like a lower part that can be adjusted and rotated. And if, I, and if you rotate it at the max, you can see that you can work your angle to be whatever you want it to be. And so in my case, I have to go the absolute worst case with the, the steepest angle, and that seems to kind of work. So we're about to find out. <laughs> so the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my spacing. You know, it's like every four inches, 16, 20, 36, 40, All right, another tedious task is I have to adjust all of those to be all at the same angle. Okay, after several trial and error, it seems like I found the best way of doing this, which is to hold it like this and then just rotate it, boom. And then it actually stops when you're at the max, so. And so you want to be extra careful when you're placing those, especially if you're using an impact drill. If you over tighten it, you will literally blow it up because it's just plastic. So you really want to take your time placing them because you have to make sure they're all aligned and all placed at the right angle. Okay, so that's the one that's going to go here, but I have to do the same marks. So we can put this aside and try and install all this now. So now it's going to be the fun part. Okay, wish me luck. This is supposed to kind of go like that. I'm gonna be here for hours <laughs> trying to get this off and then it just goes. Oh my gosh. How is it supposed to do this? Maybe from up top. We're gonna be here all day, people. We're gonna be here all day. Okay. All right, I got what, four or five in? Can we keep this going? Hey, up, 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 up. But no, 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 not all this odd work for nothing. Come on, man. There's this post that's kind of in the way. No, no, oh no, that's it. I freaked out. <laughs> no, no, I was so close. I was so freaking close. Don't die, man. So then I kept trying and trying. Trust me, you have to be extra, extra patient for this stage of the construction for the stairs. But eventually it did work out. Okay, next step. We gotta put this on top. I don't know if you see it has to be cut at a certain angle. All right, there must be a way that I can just mark that angle. Let's think, think, think. Oh, but yeah, I'm stupid. I have an idea. If I place this one nice and flat on that two by, then that's it. That's my angle. You know what? That's actually not bad. It looks parallel to it. Well, let's see. Maybe a little bit too long, like just a hair. I think we got it. We can also add, I was gonna add some here, kind of in the post. So we still have a problem here. Remember, code requirement says that you shouldn't be able to pass a six inch diameter ball between here and here. And unfortunately, I mean, you see, I mean, that's six here and I have like seven or eight. So this is not, I mean, I honestly, I would be shocked that the inspector comes and measure this, but technically this is too big of a hole. I don't know why, I mean, I don't know what can really fall, but this is too big of a hole to match code. So what I did is I just cut another one, just like the top one. And I just had to notch it here a little bit because of this being in the way. And here's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm just gonna place it like that, right? See this? And then right now, I think I reduced my hole by enough that it will meet code requirement. So. Something like that. Howdy. I probably busted the top, but oh well. So here's the idea. We're trying to, because if I just put like a bolt here, it's probably not gonna work really well because it's just gonna twist this uh, stringers and I think the post will still move. So Simpson make those things here, which are tension ties, and we're just gonna tension tie it to that blocking. And so now it will try and pull all this. And so it should hold much stronger. And so, washer, nut. Okay. I mean, okay, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a ton better. I mean, like, look, you can try and pull it this way. You can make it move a slight bit, but it is extremely solid. I finally got additional deck board at that point, so I was able to finish up the stairs and install deck board in between uh, each riser, as you can see. And then I just kept going and pretty much did the same thing that I did on that first side. Uh, so I'm obviously not gonna show you all the details again. Also, if you wanna know how much I have spent so far on this cabin, you can go to my website, which is www.thediycabinguide.com forward slash blueprint. There you will actually enter your email, you will get a copy of the blueprint, but then you will actually be added to my newsletter, which I try to send every month. And I do add a total breakdown of the cabin cost so far and also the time that I have spent. So I think this would be really valuable for you to see, especially if you're considering uh, building your own cabin. So in the next episode, I will tackle installing the metal roof of the cabin all by myself. And I'll definitely go over how I did it and what mistake did I make and what I would probably do differently. So definitely click on that link below to check out that episode and see all that I did all that by myself. All right, I'll see you then.